a history fact that many people may not know. Most lynchings in America took place on a Sunday afternoon when these hybrid devils got out of church. And it goes real deep. And we're going to get into how this blood ritual was done. And from start to the end, it is very, very evil. There is no way to pretty up this situation. It was evil. There's no way humans could have done this. This had to be a hybrid animal to do these things to our ancestors. Lynchings were some of the most heinous things that ever happened to black men, women, and children in this country. Not only did these devils do the lynchings after church, they sent out invitations in advance, inviting people to the lynchings, inviting the entire town. They would send out invitations and post flyers, and they would also put the invite on the front page of the newspaper. So the word got out to a large segment of the population in those towns. I just can't imagine what it would have been like for our ancestors in that last moment of their life being surrounded by nothing but devils and just seeing the face of devils on their way out and to their death. All the torture and blood and cutting off the penis and cutting their ears and their fingers off is disgusting. And we have to make sure our history, no matter how horrifying it is, it does not die. Because, see, our enemy, they want to put in the history book that we were migrant workers. We migrated over here and we were um, volunteer workers and all this nonsense that they're trying to now change how slavery was done and make it seem that black, uh, black presence in this country was voluntary. We can't let that happen. We can't. It would do such another major injustice to our ancestors. And we shouldn't let that happen. This really happened to them. It's real. And it's sick. Sunday afternoon, everybody participated in it, including the pastors, these white pastors. You know, it must be a reason why throughout my entire life I could never really listen to a Caucasoid pastor. I, I don't know what it was. It was just almost like something disturbing my spirit, and I just never could do it. I, you know, and I tried to do it a couple of times when, you know, back when I was a Christian, but I would get maybe like 10 minutes into their sermon and I would have to shut it off. Something just kept disturbing my spirit and I just couldn't get through it. And then when I started learning about the lynchings, most of them in the country took place on a Sunday afternoon after they got out of church. Maybe it was just something, the ancestors just letting me know, you better turn that shit off. <laughs> When I go through the history, it, it, it's very hurtful. It's hurtful that somebody would even think of doing something this evil to a human being. But it did happen. And don't ever let anybody try to take your history away from you. 
because retribution is coming to these people. Make no mistake about it. It's coming. But anybody that opens their mouth and tells you to forget your history, that's an evil person. That's evil. Only evil would say that to you. Get rid of that person immediately. If it's a black person, because unfortunately we have a lot of deeply mentally slave, um, enslaved black people that also repeat those things again get rid of those people because anytime you want to talk about your past they're only going to be around to try to shut you down you can't have that going on you have every right to speak about your history without anybody trying to disrupt you or trying to be evil around you as you're trying to talk about your history and remember and reflect on it american history is lynchings it's very deeply ingrained in the history, whether these hybrids like it or not. And these same evil ancestors that did these things raised them. And then they had offspring and raised them. And no, and I'm not going to trust them because I see the evil that they came from. Most people know little to nothing about this period of American history. Lynching and its horrors are not covered in our nation's textbooks, nor are they acknowledged or even laminated by the broader church. This unfortunate reality has left the black church, uh, church isolated in its grief over the reality that during a 50 year period ranging from 1890 to 1940, approximately 5,500 African Americans were documented as lynch victims. But I want you to pay close attention to the word documented. There were many that were lynched and it was undocumented. Okay, not all lynchings were documented. Some were, yes, but there were plenty that were done and it was not documented at all. Lynchings reached its peak in 1892, shortly after Reconstruction, with 155 African Americans lynched in this year alone. In fact, the practice of lynching was so widespread, the Tuskegee Institute, a predominantly black institute in Alabama, decided in 1881 to begin issuing annual reports on the incidents of lynchings within the country. And it was not until 1952 that the institution was able to report that there was not a single lynching to report within a given year. Popular belief holds that lynchings only occurred in the South. However, while lynching was particularly prevalent in the South, it was not exclusively a Southern horror, but was one of the enacted as far as North and West as Minnesota, Illinois, California, and Oregon. And it, that was another falsehood, ladies and gentlemen, that I learned in school. I had Caucasoid female teachers that lied because I'm not going to say they taught me anything. They lied. They stood in front of my class every day and lied and said that the lynchings only occurred in the South. As I grew up and started reading more, I realized that it went on in many states across the country, not just the South. Okay, you got to understand these Caucasoids are trying to shield themselves from everything that they've done to us. They don't want you to know. 
They want to tell you as little as possible. And that little bit they do tell you is usually riddled with all kinds of lies. Major reason why lynching is connected to Christianity is that most lynchings actually occurred on Sunday afternoons, shortly after church services concluded. After Sunday services were let out, these executed uh, executions were well attended by Christians. See, this is another reason why once I got away from Christianity, there were too many of these Caucasoids in the past and present that are Christians. And in my life, I'm speaking from my experience, these are the most evil of them all. Every time I met a Caucasoid man, man or male or female that told me they were Christians, they always ended up being the nastiest Caucasoids I ever met in my life. Those are the ones that are more likely to call you a nigger, try to do some harm to you, or claim that they are your friend and they will go in the boss's office to tell a lie on you to get you in trouble because this is their evil nat nature. It, it, it's just part of who they are. Most of these executions were based on lies, all right? What do they do? When the Becky wants to accuse a black guy of a rape, she lies. You know why? Because she got that shit from her forefathers, her ancestors, put all that shit in her head, telling her she can lie on one of us and get away with it. This is why to this day, they still will pin crimes that they did on black people. They will still accuse black people of rape. They will still go to the boss and make some lie up about you on the job just to get you in trouble because this is their nature. This is who they are. This is what's taught to them. That's all taught behavior. That's why you keep seeing it repeat itself through the generations. They teach that stuff to their children. They teach it. Okay. You're not seeing it for no reason. All right, so let's move on. This is really tough. <laughs> this harsh reality is not only beyond frightening, but it also serves to prove the necessity of beginning this conversation. In fact, many of those believers who were present at lynchings did not consider themselves to be racist. Okay, what do most Caucasoids tell you? Oh, I'm not a racist. I'm not a racist, but they clearly are. So these hybrids went to lynchings and did not consider themselves a racist because in their mind, the racists were the ones actually conducting the lynching. So if they stood there as a spectator, they, they weren't a racist. <laughs> now, if now, if that don't make you laugh, nothing will. Um, these individuals would avoid the stigma of racism and the conviction of the Holy Spirit by rationing, rationalizing their presence as purely spectators. Now, don't they always try to get out of racism even to this day? Again, taught behavior, y'all. Taught behavior. Arguing that they just happened to be present at the scene of the hanging, which in their minds did not make them culpable. Aren't they not guilty for everything they do, including the murders of Black people? Okay, they're not guilty. They didn't do nothing wrong. So you can see how far back they've been taking on that not guilty nature about themselves. Lynchings were photographed and turned into postcards, which would then be used to promote future lynchings. People would send these postcards to their friends, inviting them 
to attend the next lynching as if it was a, like a social gathering. Oh, come on out. We going we going to gather together, have some uh dinner and watch a black man get lynched. They would do that during that's why they had the picnic, picnic. They would sit at the picnic tables with their food and their drinks. And they would watch a black man holler and scream and get tortured as they ate and smiled and was entertained by it. Watching a black man get tortured and they just sitting there enjoying their food and their drink. And another thing they would do is bring their children. You know why they brought their children? Because they were trying to show their children, see, these black people are inferior. See how inferior they are? According to historian um, lynching, which also frequently including burning, castration, and disfiguring the victim, were spectacles announced in advance attended by whites, including women and children, and covered on assignment by newspaper reporters in a manner not unlike contemporary coverage of sporting events. So you get to see now how far back the media has always demonized us. And it goes all the way back to lynchings. And even before then, even during slavery, The most disturbing part about this spiritual um, spirituality, I'm sorry, um, is that people would self-identify as Christians played a significant role in these events in both the promotion and execution of lynchings. So Sunday, church, and Christianity are all linked to lynching. <sighs> Believers lack of values and ethical response to God's love was so non-existent that it was commonly accepted within the last 100 years of this nation to watch someone be tortured, burned, castrated, and killed for sport just because of the color of their skin. Moreover, one's faith was thought to have nothing to do with the coming to the defense of these helpless victims. So they called themselves Christians. They said they loved and believed in God, but they did nothing to help that black victim. That doesn't sound very Christian-like to me. In fact, one's faith did not even prohibit Christians from participating as enthusiastic observers, observers within crowds. Therefore, it was normative um, for infants and children to be taken by their parents to see these spectacle lynchings. So they were just normalizing this for their children and see, and then those little devil kids would grow up and do the same thing to black people. Imagine the psychological trauma of growing up seeing this sort of barbarism on a semi-regular basis. This had to have had a profound impact on these young minds. No, it didn't. It, it, they grew up and just followed in their mother and father's footsteps and helping and lynching. And the white woman don't get a pass. When a lot of these burnings took place, the white women were the ones that provided the kerosene to burn the black man, women, and children in. She was the provider of the kerosene. So don't try to say she did. She was so far removed. See, the, the men that want to date these devils, 
They want to act like these women were so far removed from all this stuff. No, they weren't. They were very much involved. And you women that date these white men, you need to be bitch slapped and hung. I have no empathy for you when those relationships fall apart. I don't feel sorry for you. You ain't nothing but a slave in those relationships anyway. <sighs> After all these things these devils have done, how the hell can you lay down with them? Okay, I, I, you know, I can forgive a swirler that walk away from it and never go back. But some of these people, they just go from one white man and woman to the next until they find one that can they, they can marry. You're disgusting. How can anybody respect that after hearing all of this? I, I don't even respect you. Being taken to public executions where African Americans were looked upon as a kind of game animal to be caught and executed for pleasure had to permanently hallmark the image of the black inferi inferiority with the young, impressionable minds of children. No, their kids grew up just as hateful. Believe me, there's a lot of racist children. And you hear this from uh, the public schools. Every now and then you'll see an incident take place in a public school that happened to go public. These kids already got that racism from their parents. Believe me, they're not traumatized from it. They enjoy it. They're not traumatized at all. <sighs> the remnants of racism that exist within our society, many of which have become inst institutional lies, have to be understood in relations to the reverberation effects of the trauma of the lynching tree. Although racism today seeks to hide behind the institutionalized manifestations, which makes the facade of colorblindness a tempting one of many citizens, it is our inability to talk about race to confront the legacy of the lynching tree, which forces us to deal with the country's history of black bodies swinging from trees, which undergirds the existence of racism in the US today. No, we don't need any more conversations about race. I've hear, I, I hear so many people saying that. We just need to separate from these hybrids. They have showed us over and over, they hate us, they're still lynching us by way of the police and nothing has changed, ladies and gentlemen. It's not going to change because they are happy with our subjugation. They don't want it to change. Mental slavery is the only thing that needs to end among black people. We got to get out of this mindset of believing that somehow we still need to be connected to the very people that did this to our ancestors. No, we don't. We don't need them. It's psychological warfare they're playing on you by trying to make you believe that. It's about as fake as they are. They had to keep killing our ancestors over and over because they were prospering without them. So how could it be true that you need them? I brought this story up. Uh, this came out in the New York Times, February 10th, 2015 because this is what the devil wants to do as far as um, doing something for the black community. And I said, this belongs in the nearest garbage dump that it should go. They want to take the names of the black victims of lynchings in this country 
and construct a memorial, a lynching memorial. No defense, but who the fuck needs a lynching memorial? How is a lynching memorial going to help us? That's not what we need. We can remember our history on our own without the help of Caucasoids. We don't need their help to remember our history, ladies and gentlemen. We don't need a lynching memorial. We don't need it. But this is what they're proposing to do. They want to erect markers and memorials. I, I, we don't need a lynching memorial, ladies and gentlemen. We don't. If they want to do something for the black community, give us land, give us reparations, give us things that we can use in our lives today. We don't need no damn lynching memorial. That's not going to help not one black person in this country. Not one black person is going to be helped by no damn lynching memorial. So hybrid America, you can shove your lynching memorial. But here's a map that shows most of the places where lynching took place, the heaviest places in the country. But by no means, all of the lynchings were not done here. This is just where it was the most concentrated. <sighs> you know, um, You know, I heard about the lynching memorial back in 2015 and I chuckled and laughed and I was like, you devils just, <laughs> you don't know what to do with yourselves. But we don't need a lynching memorial, ladies and gentlemen. We don't need it. We don't need it, especially from them. We can remember our history in our own way. Now, what led to a lot of the lynchings? The lynchings, even the FBI said to this day, were based on lies. Some devil woke up one day and decided to make up a story that they knew would get the, the white mobs all up in a big uh, tizzy and they, and they would go out there and snatch up any random black guy to lynch and actually these weren't random black guys they would do this to business owners but let's look at some of the crimes that black people were accused of between the 1900s and 1964. all right this one was 1892 a young American female raped mobs of thousands to send on prison and seized on Negro. It never happened. These are all based on lies. 1893, four-year-old white girl raped, then slowly tortured to death. Okay, frenzy, American mob burns Negro at the stake. Eighteen ninety nine, Negro burnt, burnt at the stake, attempted to massacre an entire family. None of these things happened, ladies and gentlemen. These are all lies. Nineteen hundred, sixteen year old girl raped. Lie. Nineteen hundred, Negro goes to white home, puts on puppy dog act, and begs for food. He's fed then rapes housewife. Didn't happen. 1900, armed Negro 
awaits until adult male leaves his home to go to work um, his farm field, Negro then barrage into home and vicious, viciously beats and rape his wife. She's left for dead. Didn't happen. All of these are based on lies. <laughs> okay. Even the FBI said when they investigated some of these lynchings, they found no crime. This is all shit. These cockazoids made up, ladies and gentlemen all lies. A Negro, and it's, you, you're going to see white female come up over and over. They have been using the white woman to use as a means of torturing and killing black people, as you can see, for centuries. And they still do it to this day. You let anything break in the news about some black guy doing something to some white girl, they go into a frenzy even to this day. And they got a long history of just lying their asses off. And a lot of these crimes were committed by Caucasoids and pinned on black men, black businessmen. Sheriff gunned down by Negro who refused to pay taxes. All right, another lie. Um, lynch raped by white female. You see how much they keep bringing up the white female and oh, housewife raped. Oh, here's another rape right here. Murder of a white man and all this stuff. I even heard, I even watched a movie. I can't remember the name of this movie. I was a child at the time where they lynched a black man in the movie. And it was supposedly over a white man that he killed. And then the white man showed up at the lynching and they all start laughing. The one that he supposedly had killed. He came to the lynching. <laughs> Um, Negro wait, uh, rapes white female. Okay. And so you, you're going to see this. I'm going to leave the link to this in the description box. All right. And some of this were a family massacred, claim a Negro massacred the entire family. These things didn't happen, ladies and gentlemen. But this just go to show you all of the lies they have made up in order to get Black men, women, and children lynched in this country. And you can see they even used the term black supremacy back in the 1900s. So when you hear them say black supremacy, even they're still digging up things from centuries ago and still using it now. All right. So I just wanted you to see this. And again, I will um, leave this link in the description box so that you can look through it yourself. All right, ladies and gentlemen. All right. They used to also send invites to the lynchings. All right. Here's one right here. All right, in the Ku Klux Klan. And they would send these invitations out and the invites would be to lynchings. Um, the invites would also be in newspapers and in flyers. And in this case, um, you can see this was a newspaper where they announced the lynching of a black man by a mob at five o'clock this afternoon. This is how the crowds came out because they would be invited to show up to these lynchings. All right. And these invites were um, gone out all over the South. All right. There was another invite to an execution. So these things happened all the time. And it's a shame. 
but this is the history and legacy of America. But invites to lynchings would go out. They would be on flyers or they would have these little invitation cards or they would have these fairs and picnics and invite everybody to come out and um, come out to the public lynching. Here's a Negro publicly whipped for assaulting women by a Delaware jailer. And then they would have all the information to invite you or a Negro was lynched and burned, a Negro burned at the stake. These people are sick and, and don't, look at the ones, the, the caucasoids that you're looking at today, they were raised by these people. Come on, how could they not be racist? Get out of here with that. They're not a racist. Get out of here with that shit. And just look at the stuff they write. 3,000 Negroes will burn. And all it, it, these, these people are sick. They're out of their minds. Here's another execution invite. And these were a lot of times um, the black businessmen mainly. And sometimes they do husband and wife. Um, I have a friend and her family was from Maryland. And the reason why they're here in New Jersey now is because her grandparents were taken out in the woods and they were shot to death by the Klan. And after that happened, her family moved up here to New Jersey. So I have come across a few people along with, you know, what happened to my grandfather at the hands of the Klan trying to get a hold of him to kill him. So, you know, we still exist. There's a lot of us that are still around that have incidents in our families. We're not dead. They probably wish we were dead, but we're not. Here's a man that was lynched and you can see the coffin. And in many cases, they would not even allow the family to even do a little funeral for them. They would just put them in a wooden box and throw them in the ground. No regard, no nothing. You can tell these are the un, most unspiritual hybrid entities you ever want to see in your life. And you can see right here in the photo, his pants are down because he was castrated. And this is more likely a black businessman they did this to. Whenever you see the sheet and the pants are down or completely removed, the castration took place. A lot of times they cut the ears and the fingers off, sometimes even toes. Here's another man that was lynched. These pictures are disgusting. And again, more than likely a businessman since 90% of them were businessmen that were living and minding their own damn business. And then these devils came along and lynched them. Now I showed these two men in the past, but what I didn't do, I did not explain. The reason why they have these two men wrapped around a tree like this is because they were raped before they were killed. More than likely, they were gang raped and then shot in the back of the head after they got finished raping them. This is very common. If you look, um, like this one man right here, he's nude, all right? That means they were raped. And this is how they would do it. They would chain them onto a tree and then strip them down and they would be in like a kneeling position and they would come up and rape them. It's sick. And sometimes they would just rip the back of the pants and they would also rape, cut the back of the pants out and, and just rape them. So that was also done. This is a man that 
Um, they were getting him ready for burial after being lynched. These are some pictures that you've probably never seen before. It's not real common to see these pictures of people after they were lynched, but you can see how badly mangled his face was. And they said his body was badly mangled. That's why it was covered up um, from being beaten and tortured, and then he was lynched. I tell you, I cannot love these people. I don't care what anybody say. This is a photograph of, you can see two coffins here. These were two black men that were lynched together up in a tree and their families were burying them after the lynching was over. And this was down in Georgia. This is the postcard that these devils would send out to each other, family and friends all across the country. Um, they proud of killing black men and they wanted to show their work that they did down in the South because this is as close as they did to work in the South because their asses didn't do nothing. Black people did all the work and all they did was try to entertain themselves through lynchings. Like it said, it, this was a sporting event for them. They all came out, men, women, children, babies, they didn't care. They all went out to enjoy it. Here's another postcard. And in a lot of cases on the postcard, they would be inviting you to the next lynching on the postcard. Invitation to the next lynching. Some sick ass shit. Here's another lynching. This man, his name was Willie James. What they did to this man was beyond sick. Willie James was killed. They cut his head off, put his head on a stake, and then set his head on fire. So beheadings also took place, just like on Black Wall Street. Some of the people they killed were beheaded. So that beheading that we saw from out of Jackson, Mississippi, this country has a history of beheading black men. They have a history of it already. And he died, I believe, in 1909. They killed him. It was disgusting. And they showed all these different pictures of their, I guess, of each stage of when they had them and then they killed them. Um, and this was also a postcard showing Willie James. And then last but not least, here's another postcard. These people were sick and they're still sick. And just remember the offspring of the people that are in your court houses and in their grandparents and in some of these elders that you see walking out here that are, are caucasoids. They were raised by the people that did this shit. And then they had families and raised the next generation and the next generation. So it should be no wonder why racism has never gone anywhere in America and it ain't gonna go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. It's never going anywhere. All I can do is pray to the Most High that he not only bring judgment on these devils that did this to our ancestors and continue to do this stuff to us today, 
but give our people the wisdom to finally wake up and see these hybrid demonic devils for what they are. No good is ever gonna come from these devils. I don't expect nothing good from them. That's what, That way I'm never disappointed because I was never expecting anything decent from them in the first place. There's no way you can be raised by the devils that did this kind of stuff and you turned out not to be a racist devil yourself. It just can't happen. There are maybe, I would say 1% of them that may not be racist, but the rest of them damn sure is. It is a, such a minute amount, it ain't even funny. That's why they can't really do anything about it because their numbers are so few where they can turn the hearts and minds of the people around. They can't. They are happy with hating you, ladies and gentlemen. They think it's nothing wrong with it. They were taught in their families, it's nothing wrong with them being racist and hating you. And then they pass that to the next generation and the next and the next. And then here you are in 2017, still witnessing the execution of black men out in public at the hands of the very same people that lynched our forefathers. Nothing's changed. We're just in a different era. This is why no justice will ever come out of any court. And no devil will ever oppose the cops that carried out the execution. Separation is the only way to our sanity and our prosperity. We cannot be connected with these people anymore. If anything, we need a divorce from Caucasoids. We need to get rid of them. Anytime somebody does this to your ancestors, they mean you nothing good. And then they're writing on this damn postcard talking about the Negro they lynched. You motherfuckers can go to hell. I never want you back in my life ever again. Please leave your comment and subscribe. And if you can donate to this channel, please do. Peace, family.